So good to have you with us. Let us begin with prayer, shall we? Living God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'm really enjoying the teachings by Eastman and Hayford on the names of Jesus, the power within Jesus' holy name, and how to live and pray in that power. The name today is Yeshua, Jesus, propitiation for our sins. Propitiation. Does that sound familiar? Let me begin with a story. J. Wilbur Chapman told the story of an old woman who stumbled and fell from the top of a stone staircase as she walked from a Boston police station. An officer immediately called for an ambulance and the woman was taken to a nearby hospital where doctors held out little hope for her recovery. She'll not live a day, a physician told an attending nurse. Concerned, the nurse befriended the dying woman and in a few hours had won her confidence. Motioning for the nurse to come near, the old woman said sorrowfully, I have traveled all the way from California by myself, stopping at every city of importance between San Francisco and Boston. In each city I visit, just two places, the police station and the hospital. You see, my boy ran away from home, and I have no idea where he is. I've got to find him. So I've sold all my possessions and made this journey somehow hoping for a miracle. The mother's eyes seemed to flash a ray of hope as she added, someday he may even come into this very hospital. And if he does, please promise me you'll tell him his two best friends never gave up on him. With that, the doctor drew near and quietly told the nurse, she'll be gone in a matter of minutes. There's nothing we can do. Bending over the dying woman, the nurse whispered softly, tell me the names of those two friends so I can tell your son if ever I see him. With trembling lips and eyes filled with tears, the mother responded, tell him those two friends were God and his mother. And she closed her eyes and died. God, even more than a forgiving mother, never gives up on his children. His forgiveness is uniquely infinite. It is infinite in that it is never ending. It is unique to the degree that it is one of a kind. Who else in the universe can genuinely forgive and at the same time forget? And since God is the ultimate one to forgive, to think on God is to immerse oneself in thoughts of forgiveness rather than failure. Soren Kierkegaard wrote, God creates out of nothing. Wonderful, you say. Yes, to be sure. But he does what is even more wonderful. He makes saints out of sinners. The gospel writer John helps us to understand this concept of God's capacity to cover our sins and thus forgive, forget them by referring to Christ as the propitiation for our sins. We've heard that right in our old liturgy, which we used in the church last week. Hear also what St. John saith. If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And then we continue, let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God, recognizing that through Jesus Christ, we may receive the gift of forgiveness. 
So we bring all that muck and mire from our lives, our mistakes, and those things we did on purpose that were not God's ways of doing things. And we lay it all down at the feet of Jesus, asking forgiveness. Jesus Christ has become our propitiator, one who has favorably inclined our circumstances toward God. To propitiate on our behalf, Jesus gave himself. He shed his blood, and so his life in its perfect essence was poured out to give God a favorable, a favorable disposition toward us. The New Testament Greek word for, for propitiation, hilasterion, means atones or returns a favor. It was used in the ancient world of votive offerings, offerings giving, given to fulfill certain vows of dedication. When used in reference to Christ, it means our Lord unconditionally fulfilled his vow to provide a way for us to come back to God. Further, Jesus unconditionally fulfilled any perceived obligation on our part that was necessary for us to gain acceptance before God. Many people make the mistake of thinking it's necessary to negotiate with God in order to be accepted by him. They sometimes pray, Lord, I'll do this if you'll do that. I wonder when you've been desperate enough to pray that. We probably all have. But as the propitiator of our sins, Christ has done everything necessary to fulfill any vow we could make to better ourselves in God's eyes. On these terms, we can come to God freely, knowing we are forgiven by him fully. What an incredible reality that is. On these terms, we can come to God freely, knowing we are forgiven by him fully. So many people have a hard time believing they are forgiven that they bring the same things over and over to God asking forgiveness. God has forgiven you fully if you have asked for forgiveness. And then when we repent and we get up from that, we turn and walk in his ways, in righteousness. Hopefully not repeating that same mistake. Otherwise, we need to bring it back to God. But what a powerful picture of Christ as our sinless substitute. Jesus poured out his life on the cross as a propitiation before God. Jesus comes between God's whoops, God's requirements for perfect perfection and purity and our imperfection and impurity. Since Jesus is absolutely perfect, God sees the record of his sinless life instead of our sin, and is disposed to accept us completely. We are seated in Christ and thereby receive God's mercy and forgiveness. When a soldier goes into the heat of battle, he cries out to his fellow troops, cover me, as he prepares to rush into the heat of the conflict. What he is asking is that his companions provide cover, artillery cover, drawing attention to themselves while he advances against the enemy. Jesus is our covering as we move into each day's warfare, and he serves as this covering in more ways than one. Not only does Jesus cover in the sense of providing artillery against the enemy, but Christ's blood is the literal covering for all our sins and failures. There's never a failure that can reach beyond God's ability to forgive. Think of David, King David. He committed adultery. He had the woman he committed adultery. He had the, hang on a minute. He committed adultery and he had the man that the husband of the woman he committed adultery with killed, Uriah, one of his most loyal and courageous soldiers. While he was off fighting King David's battles, 
King David was spending time with his wife. And then when she became pregnant, King David tried to hide his sin by having the husband killed so he wouldn't figure it out. God forgave him. God forgave him adultery and murder. Saul was a terrorist against Christians. Literally, he was out to have them all rooted out and killed. Not only did God forgive Saul, Jesus used him and renamed him Paul. And as an apostle, he used him to teach about Jesus and convert Gentiles to the way to be Christ followers, to be a Christian. Paul is a pillar of the Christian faith, a bond servant. He called himself for Jesus. God forgave him. Look at Jacob. He was a liar and a cheat. And yet God forgave him. And he became the father of the 12 tribes of Israel. God forgives through our sins. He forgives our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. He forgives everything we bring to him. Everything we bring to him. Everything. Going back to the story I started with. I feel sad that that young man ran away from home. Never knew the sacrifices his dear mother had, had made to try to find him. The love that she had for him. And sadly, they didn't reconnect before she passed. But what faith she had. What love she had for her son. I wonder how many today are still running and do not know the love and the forgiveness that is available to them through our Lord Jesus Christ. To live today in Jesus' name is not only to recognize Christ as our propitiator, but to take the quality of the Spirit into our relationships with others. Just as Jesus covers and cleanses our sins with his blood, we need to cover the failures of others with our love. We need to allow a spirit of forgiveness to flood us. Remember when Peter asked Christ if it was enough to forgive a transgression seven times? Do you remember how Jesus responded? Seventy times seven. In other words, keep forgiving. You're never done. To pray in Jesus' name, the propitiator of our sins, is to pray in the totality of Christ's unconditional forgiveness. Unconditional forgiveness. If Jesus' name means forgiveness, an idea clearly conveyed by the word propitiation, then praying in Jesus' name means we are praying in the fullness of his forgiveness. We are speaking his forgiveness into situations that we anticipate might minimize a day's potential. If, for example, someone had wronged you, speak forgiveness into that situation. And if God should impress on your heart, as he often will, to go directly to that person with a word of forgiveness, you should cover that encounter with prayer even before it actually happens. And above all, in praying today fervently, seek to place every transgression under the blood covering of Christ, who alone is the propitiator for our sins. John Wesley prayed, Forgive them all, Lord, our sins of omission and our sins of commission, the sins of our youth and the sins of our riper years, the sins of our souls and the sins of our bodies, our secret and our more open sins, our sins of ignorance and surprise, and our more deliberate and presumptuous sins, the sins we have done to please others, the sins we know and remember, and the sins we have forgotten the sins we have striven to hide from others, and the sins by which we have made others offend. 
Forgive them, O Lord. Forgive them all for his sake, who died for our sins and rose for our justification and now stands at thy right hand to make intercession for us. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Beautiful, isn't it? It covers all the ground. Now for us, I'm going to close with a prayer. I'm going to use the, um, use my own, you know, I'm going to speak for myself. And if you're in agreement, say amen, and which means so be it, claim it for your own as well. Let us pray. Father, I bow today with a renewed sense of gratitude for your all-encompassing provision in Jesus. It is so mightily assuring to be reminded from your word that my debt of sin is completely paid, my broken past completely forgiven, my list of failures completely destroyed, my record of disobedience completely forgotten. Please accept my prayer, my confession, that I sometimes am overcome by the cloud of condemnation cast upon me by my adversary. Today, Lord, I rise with the banner of the blood of Jesus to hurl it in the adversary's face. In Jesus' name, my propitiation is complete. My sin is completely covered, and I am completely free. I rise to walk in this day and all of my tomorrows, circled by the Savior's righteousness, clothed in Jesus' sinless excellence, rejoicing in my full acceptance. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Jesus is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Take those sins. Take them to Jesus. Lay them at his feet. Ask forgiveness. And know that you are completely forgiven. Then forgive yourself. Get up. Repent, which means to walk in, in the opposite direction of how you were walking when you committed those sins. Walk in his righteousness. All for the glory of God. May our Lord God bless you and keep you. Watch over you and protect you. May he guide you so that you always walk in Jesus' holy ways. And the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit be with you all the days of your life. Amen. God bless you. I hope to see you soon. Take good care. Stay safe.